if you seen this shit. Seems like you might need some spider help. What happened? I want to ask someone to homecoming, but he's special. Uh, I know we got a chance to talk about a lot of the development stuff, but obviously with the elephant in the room, we, we've got to talk about, we touched a little bit on what's going on, DEI and all that that's that's in gaming and really everything. I know uh, you, you specify a lot what's going on in gaming because you do have that kind of internal uh, uh, knowledge. It is happening, however, everywhere. But for you, was there a specific like tipping point that made you want to be more more vocal uh, was it more of like your hand was forced? It's like, okay, this is too bad like for me to just sit up here and not say anything. Um, and I do believe that people that have that level of, uh, uh, I don't want to say ne necessarily expertise, but that perspective from knowing and understanding how development cycles work, um, I, I, that perspective is, is much needed. But what was it for you that, that did it? It made you want to be like, you know what, we got to be more vocal um, about this. So... Listen, it's it's because it's a bigger problem than games. It's because the world has gone insane mm -hmm. and we've abandoned meritocracy. We've abandoned speech. We've abandoned all these principles, uh, you know, that have 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 worked so well to propel us, you know, forward as a society and to bring us together. And now we're using the cloak of virtue as a weapon to divide us right and this is not just happening in games people see it happening everywhere it's happening in tech it's happening in movies it's happening in books i have author friends who basically have been canceled by big publishers because they they don't want white authors anymore right mm. and so they've gone indie and become very successful but it's everywhere and they and and the whole system is designed to tear down everything Thing that we love that has been even the good stuff and just for the sake of replacing it and and replacing it with what replacing it with uh you know dangerous concepts like non-merit based promotions right there's mm -hmm. people being promoted into into positions that not for skill but just on the basis of their skin color right yeah. uh, all logic is being abandoned and i've been seeing this happen worldwide and i said this is bad yeah. and i want to do something about it and then I saw a tweet by Elon Musk, and he said, uh, the woke mind virus oh, yeah. is, uh, I forget the exact word, the, mo the woke mind virus is, is a threat to, to, to humanity and must be stopped, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, he's right. He's right. And I said, okay, I can't take on the world, but I can take on gaming, and I see what's happening in gaming, and people don't know what's happening in gaming or how pervasive it is, this can be the area where I can speak up. And luckily, we've got a platform where we can talk about this stuff now because for years, uh, you know, my followers were suppressed, my tweets were suppressed. Uh, you know, I couldn't get any visibility on the old Twitter platform. But now that it's X, I can have a voice and I can possibly do something. So I've been doing my best to educate consumers right i think this is vera dark likes to say this it's like listen support what you like but go in educated right yeah for sure So you, people people got to know how infested dei and esg was in gaming and is today uh not only from you know um the top down from the funding aspect but from the bottom up for all the activists who came in uh during the covid hiring boom and are still there uh, you know, creating this sort of atmosphere of hate and division uh, under the, 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 under, under the guise of looking like good people when they're actually causing more problems than, than, you know, games should be a, a watering hole. I always said that it's entertainment. It's the one time we can put our side or differences, hop into a game together and have a good time, get to know each other. And they they don't want that. These community managers, uh, I've been pointing out how rife with DEI they are. I've had insiders come in. I've broken stories about it. Uh, they have secret groups where they talk about this and they shame other community managers if they don't have the right opinions uh, and try to get them canceled or fired. And, you know, you you and these are the people interfacing with the gaming community and people need to know about this and this is uh so yeah so i would say that that is exactly what i'm doing and twitter it's gotten a huge amount of attention uh thanks to cabrutus cabrutus rambo 
bless his soul, Brazilian man, yeah. started a group called uh, Sweet Baby Detected on a curated group on Steam. It's currently at 350,000 members, it's, and we want it number one. PC Gamers at number one with 600,000, so please join his Steam curated group. All he did was put up a list that say, hey, these these people, this consultancy group, which specializes in woke agenda stuff and wrote for all these games that uh, ultimately had very poor writing and crashed and even closed some studios like Suicide Squad, you should know about this. And then you make the decision. Do you want to buy this game or not? That's all he said. And they went after it and they tried to cancel it and they tried to cancel me and they're trying to cancel. They're trying to shut everybody up right now. And we're never going to shut up. And that, you know, I think when Cabrutus spoke up, that's when I, I went full throttle. I said, OK, Elon's right. Cabrutus has a wedge. Let's make that wedge really wide. Let's educate everybody and see where the chips fall. Here's Johnny. Uh, that's so that's respectable. And look, it's I, I think that people not being in the know on how this stuff is going down, how infested these this stuff is. I think it's so very important. And you having been part of developmental groups, maybe when you were definitely doing uh, stuff with Blizzard and others, I'm pretty sure there were external factors, but maybe not to this degree. But can you take us through, um, definitely with you having those insiders, the involvement of the external companies? We know that was the Sweet Baby Inks is the the uh, under the guise of consultancy and the the black girl gamers and the gamer exes uh, where that's specifically why they are brought on to inject essentially uh, their social views, per se, um, into these these narratives of, of a lot of these games. Right. So how involved because obviously it feels like it's gotten worse. <laughs> um, how involved are these sort of external uh, uh, companies in like game development these days? You know, it ranges. Uh, I, I think when when Sweet Baby Inc. and uh, Black Girl Gamer says, oh, we don't do anything. And the press report says, well, they don't have any real impact. It's all a misunderstanding. Uh, that's a half truth. There are some games where they're brought on just to check a box, mm -hmm. right? Because when you check that box, you get extra ESG points, and that qualifies you for more funding. So CFOs and CEOs of companies, and which I've been one, uh, you know, your CFO is your best friend, and you're looking to get that funding money, and you just fill the boxes. But on the other projects, they do have a tremendous amount of influence. Kim Belair, uh, the head of uh, SBI, is is credited as lead writer on many projects, including Suicide Squad, right? So, which cratered completely. And I think the more influence they have on the project the worse it gets because these people aren't in there to make games these people saw an opportunity saw that big companies needed to check these boxes and were throwing money around to hire consultants to check those boxes they got in there they didn't have the talent to actually write a triple a game and it cratered studios and that's a real shame mm. so what do you think about the, the the invitation, right? Because we've seen this in, for example, these bigger companies, some not even related to entertainment, where what they're doing is creating these internal sort of departments where that's the type of weird stuff that they focus on. It's DEIs, the diversity officer, chief officers that have a team under them, and that's specifically what they're designed to do. Uh, sensitivity screen and, and, again, inject whatever nonsense that they need in it. Do you think that's more or less what's, what's more so happening uh, with a lot of these companies now that – it's that bad where it's um, less even about the consultancy and more about we're putting this we're designating uh, uh, an entire uh, department for this nonsense. Yeah, that that's all financially driven. Look, you have to. You know, the bigger companies can have their own internal DEI departments. Uh, the smaller studios, what they're being asked to do is hire consultants like Sweet Baby, uh, hire other ESG. Uh, fund you know funding uh, esg checkbox companies like uh, Matt that come in and manage your gender balance on teams and promotional hiring strategies promotional and hiring strategies why is this happening why do these triple a companies do this because games are hugely expensive to make and it's not like you know you make one game and you take all your own money and you invest it no you find the cheapest money you can and you hold on to your cash flow so you're you're going out as a, you know cfos are going out there 
and you can, and publishing things and they're raising money from banks they're raising money from uh you know uh trade portfolio funds uh they're they, you know uh retirement funds even and university funds and they all have esg requirements especially in the 2019 era okay um, it shifted away from that and uh, away from media a little bit. But during 2019, 2020, this is where all the cheap money was. And you could get hundreds of millions of dollars and save a lot on your interest rates for your any loans. Uh, and you could do this if you had proper ESG scores. So what does that mean? That means you had to have things like the right board composition. You can't have all white people on your board. You have to have POCs and not just any POCs. Asians don't count. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Asians don't count. They basically, uh, they, they call yeah. you like the white people of minorities, is what they I said. I had one board that that you know that said uh, Hispanics don't count. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, and so they look at your board composition, and they look at what your uh, your you know what initiatives you have launched to the company. Do you have a DEI department? That's where that comes from. Uh, do you have, you know, consultants? What's your, uh, you know, hiring makeup? Uh, you know, who are in the lead and manager uh, positions? Uh, here's a Pantone chart. Okay, you're good to go. Please compare it to this and rate how you're doing. Uh, this is uh, this is all requirements for things like funding and for credit scores for big credit rating agencies like Moody's, right? Yeah. This affects your stock price, too. So it's not just the funding. It's also your stock price. So during this time, that's when DEI went crazy in game companies. And that's where, you know, internal DEI departments sprouted up. And it's gotten so bad at some studios. Not every studio is as bad as others. But I'll tell you that from my sources, Ubisoft has got to be one of the worst. Uh, Activision, okay. uh, uh, you know, uh, sorry, it will be Microsoft now. But what we knew is Activision is one of the worst. Where the DEI department is directly involved with feature decisions on games. You got an idea to put in your game, you got to run it through the DEI department. Do you know how long that takes? Mm. So how many game decisions have to be made every day when you're developing a game? Imagining that you got to go to, you know, legal for all this, except in this case, it's, it's your political commissar. Oh! I have documents on all of you. DEI. Imagine you have to go to your DEI person every time you decide what the fe you, you make a change to the female character. Is it is it too feminine? Yeah. Is it you know? <laughs> yeah. Does it appeal to the trans gays? You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. You know, we, it, it, it's like you can't. You're you're being choked, and so many good devs are out there, and I feel horrible because they're held hostage to all of these insane policies, and they don't have any creative freedom. Thanks for watching right now. The Ripperverse is in the middle of our latest campaign, Yaira Number no. 1, which was written by the Saskas. Head over to Ripperverse.com, pre-order and check out our first live action trailer and the latest Ripperverse Studios production. Y'all be easy.